All right, for chapter four, homework problem three, we have water flowing in a lateral V ditch uh, with class B stone, and the stone has a diameter of eight inches. The ditch has two to one side slopes. It's one and a half feet deep. This got stretched together. Um, and it flows on a 1% grade. So we want to know the maximum flow rate the ditch can carry without overtopping its banks. So we're looking for a Q here. So the first thing I'm going to notice is that it is this stone and we're told the diameter. And so that's going to let me figure out my Manning's N. And in order to do that, I'm going to follow this equation from the equation sheet. For stone Manning's N, I take the diameter to the 1 6 power diameter in inches and divide it by 44.4. So let's go ahead and do that first. So my Manning's N is going to be this 8 inch diameter, so 8 to the 1 sixth, and divide that by 44.4. And that does give me a Manning's N of 0.032. Alright, the next thing I'm going to notice is even though this is a V ditch, I still have to find its hydraulic radius to use the uh, Manning equation, and I still have to find its area. So I can actually use this trapezoidal channel um, formulas that I derived earlier based on these uh, dimensions of a trapezoid, but then just kind of see for a V-ditch, for instance, this B would be equal to zero for a V-ditch. So how is that going to affect these formulas? So let's take a look at that. For instance, in our area, if our b is equal to zero, area is just going to be equal to my squared. Uh, for our perimeter, our wetted perimeter, if it's a v ditch, again, b equals zero. So wetted perimeter just equals 2y times the square root of 1 plus m squared. And then same as trapezoidal channels, hydraulic radius is going to equal area over wetted perimeter. So let's write down those formulas. So as I said, for the area for this v ditch, we're just going to use my squared, okay, because there is no base width. And in this case, our m is that horizontal distance here to 1, so it's 2. And then our y is 1.5 feet, and we'll square that. All right, so the area is equal to 4.5 square feet. And then for the perimeter, same thing, that B term drops out. So the perimeter becomes 2Y times the square root of 1 plus M squared. Uh, in this case, our Y is the 1.5 feet. And then we have the square root of 1 plus this 2 squared. I'm going to go ahead and solve that for perimeter. And we wind up with 6.7 feet for that wetted perimeter. So to find the hydraulic radius, I'm going to take that area, divide it by the wetted perimeter. So it's the 4.5 square feet divided by 6.7 feet. And I wind up with 0.67 feet for my hydraulic radius. So now I'm ready to plug into that Manning equation. And I'm going to go ahead and solve for Q here. Um, so I'm going to say Q is equal to... Uh, that conversion factor, 1.486, divided by n times uh, the area, I'll put that first, times the hydraulic radius to the two-thirds, times the slope to the one-half. So anything I don't have so far is the slope. I am told that it is a 1% grade, so I will use that value for slope. But remember, when I plug Manning's uh, slope into the Manning's equation, I want to put that slope in decimal form. So S is going to be equal to 0 0.01 for my equation. All right, let's put those numbers in. So 1.486 uh, divided by the 0 0.032 times that area, which is 4.5. And I'm just going to drop my units here because I know at the end I'm going to get cubic feet per second um, if I put these all in in the right dimensions, 0 0.67 to the 2 thirds and 0 0.01 to the 1 half. And then go ahead and finish up that math. I wind up with Q equal to 16 cubic feet per second for homework problem three for chapter four.